Hello. Would you like to learn how to make a face mask today? Because I would love to teach you my version, which includes a little metal piece in the nose that allows you to create a seal around your eyes. I understand that these will not necessarily protect us from the coronavirus, but I thought it could be a lovely way to keep our fingers out of our mouths and keep our elders and immunocompromised loved ones safe as much as we can. So today I will show you just my version of making a face mask with a metal nose enclosure. And for fun, I also put the metal pieces in the sides because sometimes, depending on the size and shape of your face, you can get gaps along here. So I put some metal now that you can shape it any way you like. So for those of us with naturally high cheekbones, this will help. So some supplies. Oh, hi moms. Thank you for the fabric, Nancy's. is about 14 inch width and an 8 inch length which just so happens to be a little bit short of a regular dinner napkin if you want to upcycle. Um, I chose cotton because it's breathable and um, easy to wash, which also makes this face mask washable. Hi, thank you. My future mother-in-law gave me a bag full of fabric pieces and this is one of my favorites. Um, so we have a couple options. I lined my face mask with a lace that's um, about a quarter inch thick. And it is not stretchy along this side or this side, but right here is stretchy around the earpiece. And if you're making your mask for a gentleman who doesn't want to be so frilly, I highly recommend keeping it simple. And instead of my stretchy ear lace and the non-stretchy lace that goes around the edges, I recommend a simple knit elastic. And it comes in black and gray and white, so you can make them a more masculine mask if they prefer. Maybe they will like mine. Also, some string. A tape measure. And if you don't have a tape measure, a regular old ruler will do. And if you don't have a ruler, I found that you can just find one um, online print out that paper or use one of those actual size ones to show you with your phone. Some pins are helpful. This guy, a thimble. You only need one needle. Mine just come in a pack. Also a fabric marking pencil 
or whatever you use. I will use blue because the lighter fabric, but if you have a darker fabric, a lighter colored marking pencil will show up better. This is what I made the nose strips out of. Just regular paper clips. Well, these ones are kind of fancy because they're gold. <laughs> and basically, I just opened it up. I won't do it right now, but eventually I got one of these. This is the nose piece. And you can see that I curled it on the edges. And you can do this without these things, but I found them helpful. So like this one, you just grab it. And then this one, you just kind of like twirl it in and make that little loop. And if it's too long, you can cut it with this one. But um, in a pinch, I think you'll be able to figure it out without any of these. So three paper clips, regular size. What else? I made this guide. This paper has a width of seven and a half inches. Oops. And a length of seven inches, roughly. So what I did was I created a one inch section up here. And then each one of these lines, and it looks like there's 11. 11 lines of half inch. And what you're going to end up doing is folding the fabric like this to create the accordion fabric over your mouth so it can open and close. Okay, I think that's all the supplies. Oh. Also, not a necessity, but very helpful. An ironing board. And an iron. And because it's cotton material that I'm working with, I feel the iron with a little bit of water and coat it on a medium steam setting. Children, if you are watching this, hi. Alana and Lehua. Auntie Robin says, Aloha. And Henry, Auntie loves you. All right, enough of that. <laughs> Let's get started. We're going to fold the fabric in half. Right sides together. And by right sides, I mean the side that has the design on it or the print most visibly. So right sides together. Get our needle and make sure that our mom or dad or somebody with a little bit of safety experience is with us when we're threading our needle and we're using an iron. We always want to make sure that there's an adult in the room just supervising us to make sure that we're safe.
I'm sure there's a more hygienic way to knot your thread. If any of you have suggestions, I'm all ears. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now that we have our needle and our thread knotted, we're going to go ahead and sew along the raw edges of the fabric. Again, the right sides were together. Fold it in half. We're just going to line up the edges well and then sew straight across. Well, relatively straight. I am not a professional seamstress by any means. I had some lessons when I was a young girl. Thank you, Mom. And um, from a woman named Sharon Pearl. Sharon, if you get a chance to see this video, I hope you understand how grateful I am for your time <laughs> and patience. <laughs> about anybody with the ability to stitch a line can make this mask. You don't need to have a sewing machine. I have a sewing machine and I thought about doing this tutorial with the sewing machine but then I thought it might be more helpful and be able to reach more people if it didn't require a sewing machine and more people can use this tutorial to create a mask at home. Once we have our stitch across the top, and this is okay. Just one little stitch across the top. We're going to go ahead and we are going to flip it right side out so the pretty side of the fabric is facing outward. And now we have a tube. Woohoo! So, what we're going to do with this tube is, as you can see, there's a seam across it, and we want that to be on the very end. So, we're just going to kind of almost like roll the fabric as much as we can so that seam is exposed. Or not so much exposed, but just really press that out so that seam is right at the end. And we're going to flatten it. We're going to press it with the iron. So we've got this pattern. And what I'm going to do is just place it right over our Oh, would you look at that? It fits perfectly. And basically, we're just using this as a guide to mark our fabric. So I just mark with my fabric pencil where each line meets the fabric. example. I should mention that depending on your fabric or the print of your fabric, you might want to determine which side will be the front before you mark it. <laughs> and on the other side, 
same thing. Helps if you keep the paper in place as you turn it so that your lines will be even. Okay, so let's see if I can show you how this turned out. You can see my blue lines. on both ends. Okay. This is why sometimes it's more helpful to have a ruler than it is a tape measure, but either one will work fine. But with the stiffness of a ruler, it's easier to trace your lines across because we're going to go from one line marking to the other, straight across, matching them up all the way as we go down. Don't get overwhelmed. We won't be sewing across each of these lines. This is just where we're folding and ironing. Okay. So if you follow the lines across, it should look something like this. With the larger, one inch gap at the bottom, or I suppose the top, depending on how you're folding the pack. Okay, that's the last we'll be using this. And I believe now we can move on to folding. <laughs> yes, DIY is do it yourself. Because anybody can do this. If you have a needle and thread and some fabric, you should be able to kind of wing it. You don't have to be a seamstress. I think we want to basically, so what you're going to do is once you have that first big section ironed out, that's when you kind of begin to accordion the fabric and iron it. So you're just going to kind of, and follow the lines that you created and it's easy peasy. So you just fold it right into that next line and then iron down.
maybe on this last one, don't match up the lines completely. It's like a little, just like a mini tuck. We'll do a half tuck on the top. It can be replicated. <laughs> okay. Now I think it would be appropriate to begin considering wire placement. Now that we have accomplished the accordion part of the mask in the fabric material, hopefully. Hopefully you were able to follow that. Feel free to drop me some comments if you have questions. So, to our safety clips. Safety clips? No, paper clips. We're going to go ahead and straighten them out. Since I have these on me, I'm going to make it easy on myself. Easier. Okay. So I made the metal piece that will be sewn into the side to create a seal around your cheek. And I made sure that each uh, circly thing on the end, my needle will fit through. Just like that. And again, if you're confused, this is what will be placed inside of the side part of the mask to create the seal around your cheek so that you can form it however you like. And the circles is where you thread the needle through so that you can wash this without the metal falling out. Okay, so we have one for one side. One piece of metal around on one side and then one piece of metal that goes along the nose which leaves us with one more side piece to form. Okay, so we've got our third piece or our second side piece. And enough of that. Now we decide how we would like to move forward. I think it would be best to put all of these in place with some simple stitches before moving forward. But I give you complete creative authority to do this at your own pace and as you please. Because they say there's more than one way to skin a cat.
there. What did we decide? That was gonna be on the front side. Oh, and it has to come through the back, through the hole of your paper clip. So basically, we have sewn this piece in there. for bearing with my cell phone camera <laughs> and now we are just going to stitch along that piece of metal that is going to create the seal along our cheeks and again it doesn't have to be fancy because this will be hidden once you fold over And it's also a nice way to sort of tack your folds in place. Okay. So we now have our very first metal piece tacked onto the mask. Loosely stitched. Um, I'll show you the back. So that's how that works. With that piece of metal, we are just rolling this pin part on the front side of our mask. Some may prefer to pin it. Just whatever you feel comfortable. those little hems want to keep rolling out. So we have the ear piece, like so. Um, it does feel like you're juggling, pinning them different places down with your fingers. 
because once you have this ear piece in place, we are going to take the non-stretchy piece of the legs and place it over the ear piece, over the rolled hip. <laughs> begin to sew that into place. Just remember to look underneath every once in a while to make sure that the hem is still rolled. You may need to tuck it in and roll it again as you go. Not bad thing. you where we're at. It's a bit of a sorry state, but it's an actual excellent way for me to show you how to correct what can happen. So as you can see, some of that sneaky hem started to roll out. So what we're going to do is just, uh, so we sewed across one way, and then we'll sew a little bit lower across the other way, and kind of trap that hem in there, we'll make sure that that hides. Boop. We'll just tuck that in and sew it away. the other side. So technically you could stop here and you have a perfectly good mask, but if you want to add in the metal ear piece, excuse me, metal nose piece, then this is the next step. Since we have both of the metal pieces on the sides that seal your cheeks, let's go ahead and add the metal piece that will seal around your nose. So it's the same idea, we'll just take the metal and tack it in place first. The nice thing about this is we don't have to roll over and finish any hems because these ones are already done. I thought I just go past that step. It should be smooth sailing from here on out. Easy peasy. We're almost there. No 
this piece. Um, tacked in. Like so. Now we're gonna hide that with some lace. Just like this one. Um, as you can see, the metal nose piece is hidden on this one. The lace around the edges so now we're just going to eyeball a piece of lace this way to cover this side. Hi, Bob Ann. Thanks for dropping in. I like to leave a little extra on the ends of this one so that you can fold it under. it doesn't fray when you wash it. So you just take it, fold it under, and then you kind of have like a little hemmed edge to begin sewing with. stitched across the top. Our nice piece of lace, which encloses the metal that seals around the nose. It's still under there, you can see it. So now what we're gonna do is stitch along the bottom and close the bottom off. So you won't be able to see that gold poking through, you know, if you squinch up the nose part. <laughs> of metal enclosed in the nose which will allow us to form it just like that and create a nice seal. So this last step is purely aesthetic. If you find yourself too tired to go on, this is still a fully effective mask with all the enclosures for your nose and cheeks. However, if you have a thing for symmetry, like I do, let's go ahead and put one last piece of lace along the bottom to match the top. So just like the top, we'll eyeball it with enough to fold over the edges.
since this bottom part does not have the metal enclosure, we only need to stitch across once. Which means we're almost done! Something I want to mention I say these are washable, but depending on the sturdiness of your stitch, you might want to use a garment bag when you wash these and put it on a delicate cycle just to be safe. But assuming you pre-washed your fabric to avoid shrinkage, you should be able to wash them on hot and sanitize them frequently. And I want to thank you for joining me on this tutorial and for your patience through my mistakes and my repairs. You guys have been great sports. Hi moms, Jackie, Nancy, thank you so much for the fabric. It's gone a long way. Now we're on our final stitches. Don't forget to fold over this last little piece to avoid fraying when you wash. And I know I already said this once, but I think it bears repeating that these will not protect you from the coronavirus, but they will help you to keep your fingers out of your mouth and to not touch surfaces that elderly may be using or the immunocompromised. Just tuck in all the little raw edges once you've folded over the ribbon. Another nice thing is that, from what I understand, the important masks are in short supply for our medical staff. Nurses, doctors, medical assistants all require the masks to be able to take care of the sick and they are in short supply. So for those of us with a strong immune system, it would be nice to be able to make our masks out of upcycled materials for both our planet and our medical professionals to be able to have access to the masks they need and we can use these handmade ones to simply be more cautious of keeping our fingers out of our mouths, noses, and eyes. Ta-da! Okay, let's see if it works. We've got the metal nose piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and Round it, I think my nose is probably about the same width as this finger, so we'll just do a little squeeze and then kind of shape it outwards for my underneath my eyes. Da -da -da -da. Are you able to see this? And then the cheeks, I just kind of do a little inward squish. Inward squish. And if you have a larger chin, you can just pull it down like that. <laughs> and this concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope to see you soon. Au revoir!